primary role of the Max Center is to act as a catalyst. Uh, this doesn't take place anywhere else in the market that I'm aware of where you bring ideas in from academia, you bring ideas in from industry, with practitioners, with people from all different settings and walks of life, and you create an environment where people are going to learn together on a specific subject. So they catalyze those interactions. It doesn't happen anywhere else but at the Max Center, as far as I know. It provides value in three ways. Uh, first of all, it's a, it's a learning laboratory. So it brings in practitioners from the field who are actually working on the problems every day that the MAC Center studies. So it enables the faculty to have access to practitioners of the art of business or the science of business, whichever way you want to characterize it. Primarily, it affords that opportunity uh, by way of access. The second thing it does is there, there are ways to places to run experiments. In the world of business, it's difficult to run an experiment. You can ruin your business, you can ruin lives, you can create a lot of uh, discontinuities in a market by running an experiment that you may not have a long-term interest in sustaining, but you want to know what the results are. So the Max Center provides faculty working with a business an opportunity to run those experiments. And then finally, it gives some reassurance to, am I doing the right thing? Is this the right place to go? And the faculty, having studied these problems for the past couple of decades now, has great confidence and could work with the business community to figure those pathways out that work best. So, so here's a recent one that, that I feel was just outstanding. Now, not because I was in the conference, by the way, but just because it, it covered a subject called uh, co-creation, uh, where we focused on, in the Mac Center, working with others, working with academics, working with other I industrial partners. So we did that uh, in November of last year, and since that meeting and a number of companies that I've met with since that time, the subject matter, the material, the lessons learned in that meeting have continued to come up in the conversation. The, the questions are no longer what do we deliver in the way of value, it's how do we work together to create value in the marketplace. A completely different perspective than these companies would have had prior to attending that conference. So to me it's made a dramatic impact on the faculty and it's made a specific impact on me, but it's one of those things that, that you can only measure and you can only um, be aware of ha having participated in the meeting and then realizing what's going on in the market following that meeting. Oh, absolutely right. Oh, it's just, it's an ideal place to go do it. As a matter of fact, um, what I used to do when I was in industry was I'd sit in the meeting and actually sit there and try, it's like trying suits on, you know, trying clothing, clothing on for size. Well, does that fit? How do I look in this suit? And you can do that with ideas that come up in these meetings. You try them on for size. Well, the business is a little different than mine. The people are not quite the same, but what would it look like in my organization, in my business, in, in the things that I do? And it gives you a real live chance to do that where you wouldn't have any other opportunity anywhere else in the market to do that. Oh, well, uh, there, there's a, probably a long list of things. Uh, the co-creation is uh, certainly one of them. I think the, the concept of a learning laboratory, however, is the most cutting edge and has remained so since the Mac Center was founded. It was an idea that came up uh, through the faculty here in the, in the center and uh, in order to, uh, it, you know, you do innovative things every day. You don't notice them until some historian comes along and writes them up as history. So that's one of the things the Mac Center is able to do. So just the, the fact that they've been able to sustain this um, for the past 15 years tells you that it has value. These events are always um, well subscribed. People continue to come. People continue to seek out the core team of the Mac Center. And then you have the very specialties that are represented around the table. So you have a management skills representative, innovation techni techniques um, represented. You have, like the meeting today, you have the, the ability to look back and say, you know, we did things wrong, but how do I make them right? The one other thing that is a real leading edge trend which you do not find anywhere else is the ability to disagree in a public forum without anyone thinking poorly of you. So that's a piece of technology we don't have anywhere else. You can go here, you can have an idea, you can float the idea out, people can then push back on it, think that it's either a bad idea or it won't fit or it worked only in that setting. And so the Mac Center by bringing those specialties together continue to deliver. That's a leading edge technology. It's not necessarily a technological thing we think of in a widget, but it's a communications technology that still needs to be developed in the general marketplace. Oh, the faculty are a great source of uh, innovation, a great source of thinking. The other thing that, uh, that we don't um, often think about is the access that are provided 
uh, by the Mac Center uh, and, and Penn. So the Mac Center functions as a doorway. So it's a doorway to the rest of the university at large, number one, um, through the Mac Center companies or academics or anyone who works in the Mac Center has access to the rest of Penn. Penn's a huge organization. There are thousands of people here. There, there's a huge faculty, the medical school, the engineering school, arts and sciences, and so on. And so by using that doorway, a company or an individual can gain access to the rest of the institution. The reverse also works. There is the doorway to work through the Mac Center to have an open door on the rest of the marketplace, the rest of the world actually. And I think that's the one thing that if I were to say what is the one thing I think we need to make better use of for the Mac Center and for everybody is the better use of that doorway or at least knowledge that it exists. That would be most helpful both internally as well as externally. So what, what people don't see, the behind the scenes part of the MAC Center that, would, that it, it brings value to this process is the debate among the faculty themselves. So the core team gets together and decides what's important in the world of business today. Yesterday it may have been important, but today, what's going on in the market today? And they debate among themselves. And that's a debate that even though it's more or less a consensus that, gee, let's have a conference today on the subject of innovation or have a conference on co-creation, there's always a minority opinion. There are always people who believe that there's an aspect of that conference that will not be addressed or that should be addressed that's not on the agenda. And they bring that into the room. And by bringing that into the room, it enables, it teaches everyone else that it's okay to bring different ideas into a room that's focused on you know, uh, answer A, but maybe B works, maybe C works. Maybe there is a different way to approach the problem and a different definition of the problem. So the behind the scenes um, interaction among the core team members actually bring, goes right into the room uh, in, in these symposium and it actually uh, bleeds over into relationships with, with uh, companies that come in here and, and seek out faculty or in the students uh, who interact with the Mac Center work on projects. Um, and that's one of the other things which I, I didn't mention, which I should, is the ability for students to gain access to industry is critically important. You know, the next wave of, of great thinking is in the minds of the students that are here and students that want to have access to this, um, this uh, venue. So uh, we open that up to students as well. It's a, it's a huge uh, opportunity for people to really plan the future and participate in the future starting today. Oh, uh, it, uh, there's a couple ways. Uh, one, you get to run the mental experiment coming in the room and saying, gee whiz, that, that's a really good idea. So that's the, the first thing. The second thing is access to faculty wh whom you didn't know existed before you walked in the room. Uh, and I'm not just speaking of faculty at the, in the Mac Center at the Wharton School, although I think they're the best in the world, by the way. Uh, but the Wharton School brings in great, outstanding faculty from other institutions as well that you, <clears throat> as an industry person, may not have been aware of prior to walking in the room. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so that's one of the, the values that are delivered right to the doorstep of industry. Uh, the third thing is an opportunity to really dig more deeply into any specific subject area that is important. So if a topic comes up in a meeting and you say, gee whiz, I really didn't spend enough time on co-creation, what does it mean for my business, which may be a little different than the businesses I heard in the meeting, you know who to talk to, you know who to go to, you know who to call. The, the last thing that it provides industry with is a uh, list of colleagues. It is difficult working in any single company, particularly with the flat organizations that we have today, to find colleagues, people who share your problems, people who understand your problems. Maybe not in the exact same business, but you could learn, if you're in the aircraft industry, you may learn something from a person with a similar responsibility in banking or similar responsibility in IT. And you can't find those peers going to work every day uh, in your office.